Okay, so one of those things that trips students up time and time again is the ambiguous case for the law of sines, especially the one that doesn't really mean to make any sense is when there is no triangle. And what I want to do in this video is just cover three different ways that you can identify if you are working with sides that actually do not create a triangle. Now, whenever we're dealing with a problem with the law of sines, I always recommend students go ahead and draw a picture of the triangle with the side lengths. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but whenever we're dealing with the ambiguous case, I always like to deal with my angle in the lower left-hand corner, my opposing side length to be here, and then the lower side to be here. So it doesn't really matter if I'm given A, B, C, or X, Y, Z, whatever we want to call the angles. I always like to make sure I have them in this format. So the first way we can easily identify if we're given sides of a triangle where no solution exists is when we draw a triangle that looks absolutely ridiculous to be drawn. So let's just say if I had A equals let's say 42 degrees, and then let's say A was equal to two, and C is equal to 18. So if I was to go ahead and draw this triangle here, I would say 40, you know, 42 degrees is very similar to 45 degrees, right? So it's gonna look something like this. And so we could say, you know, that's 42 degrees, that's an A. Now we're gonna call this side length over here, C, right? So that would be 18. And then this length, which is opposing of this, right? Because remember the sides are opposing sides this is going to be two. Now, if you just look at this as like a rational problem, this absolutely makes no sense. If this is 18 long, and we know that angle, right? 42 degrees is between zero and 90. Like this is impossible for this side length to be a two, right? And in reality, this probably is gonna look something like this, right? And you can see, it doesn't matter how much I rotate this side length, we're never going to create a triangle. So this would be an easy example of how you could quickly identify if you're gonna have a no triangle as a solution. So basically what you wanna do is go ahead and make sure you draw your two angles opposing each other. And if this angle is so short, is so much shorter compared to that angle, and you have an angle that's roughly like in the 42 degrees, like obviously if this was like 12 degrees, right? You know, if we had an angle like this, that was, you know, let's say 12 degrees, well, that might be a different situation, right? But when we're dealing with the 42 degrees or anything higher, and this side length is really short compared to this side, then obviously we can see that no triangle is going to exist based on those numbers. Now, what about in this case, when we have our opposing side is not as short as the 18. Again, I'm still going to want to draw this. I'm still going to draw, draw a sketch. And again, I always like to have this just in the same example. I'll put now B over here. That's gonna be 42 degrees, that's a 12, and that's an 18. Now, the way that this is drawn is that kind of makes sense, right? When it was two, that was kind of ridiculous. Like that's never gonna make a triangle. But when it's 12, that's not too bad. So how are we gonna figure out if this makes a triangle or not? So the main thing we need to understand is why is no triangle going to exist? And no triangle is going to exist whenever this opposing side is basically going to be shorter than the height. So here in this example, we have the height, right, H. As long as this side, no matter how much I rotate it, as long as that's shorter than the height, no triangle is ever gonna be made because this is not going to close in the figure. So what we really need to do is figure out what H is. Now, if you think about this in terms of right triangles, because H is gonna be a perpendicular with this base here, if we know this is going to be B, and this is going to be, let's say, our A, we can write an expression here based on this angle, right? I can say the sine of B is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then if I just wanted to solve for H, I would just multiply by A on both sides. And I get H is equal to an A sine of B. Now again, it doesn't matter where the letters are or the orientation of my triangle. It just really makes sure to understand when you have your angle and then your A is going to be your hypotenuse. Now, here comes the kicker. If this value B is going to be less than my height, then obviously a triangle is not going to be made. If B is equal to H, then actually we have a right triangle, right? So that would be perfect. But H is the smallest that this side can be, right? It can't be any smaller. If H was any smaller, then this angle would have to be smaller or no triangle is going to exist. So the next quickest way to be able to identify if you have a triangle or not is just to be able to identify H. If H is going to be greater than your opposing side, then you're gonna have no triangle that's going to exist. So now all we're going to do is again, you could set up a, you could set up the relationship here if you want to, or you can just kind of replace them in there. What I like to do is say H is going to be equal to my hypotenuse here, which is going to be 18 times the sine of my angle, which is 42 degrees. Now, in this case, you will want to go ahead and use a calculator and we'll just round to the nearest hundredth in this case. Now you can see that H is 12.04, which indeed is greater than 12. So this is 12.04 and then this is 12. 
So it's going to be really, really close, but guess what? It's just going to mid it. It's never going to actually touch the base. Therefore, this is not a close figure, and therefore, this is not going to be a triangle. So maybe that last example was a little too much, and I know it does come with some practice, but it is pretty intuitive once you kind of work through a couple examples. But in the reality, the no triangle solution is not something that comes around many, many times. So you might forget it, especially if you're taking a test or a quiz, and you might have just forgot exactly what to do. There is another way that is pretty simple and also kind of comes along with solving using the law of signs. Now, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is again, just like all the other previous examples, is draw a triangle based on our values. Okay, now notice I did change the angle a little bit at 46 degrees, but again, that doesn't really matter. Like this is definitely plausible, like 42 and 46, those are very similar to each other, right? So this 12.5, it's plausible. Like it's probably gonna be pretty close to the height, but I don't really remember what to do with the H or what to plug in. I just kind of totally forgot. So what else can we do? Hopefully you remember, like when we're solving for the missing sides of a triangle, we use the law of sines. So if I have enough for a ratio here, so I can solve for the angle A. Remember when using the law of sines, we always wanna put our missing angle in the numerator. So the sine of A over 18 is equal to the sine of 46 degrees all over a 12.5. Now, all I gotta do is solve for my sine of A. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by an 18 on both sides, and then I get a sine of A equals a 18 times a sine of 46 all over a 12.5. Now, the cool thing is when you gotta go and solve for A, right? So we have to take the sine inverse. And if this angle does not exist, then guess what? The triangle does not exist. So how are you gonna know if this angle does not exist? Well, go ahead and plug in your calculator. And when you go ahead and plug in your calculator, you're gonna get an error because the ratio is going to be greater than one. So anyways, when you get A equals an error, right? That means this angle does not exist. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if the angle does not exist, the triangle does not exist. It's a little bit more work, but it's an easy way to be able to identify if you have an example of no triangles. I love using the height because that gives you a more an intuitive sense of how to identify when we have the one, two, or, or no triangles. And then last but not least, this one's kind of silly, but again, sometimes it does happen. And when you're taking like a multiple choice test or something like that, this can be an easy way to be able to identify if you have a no triangle case. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video is helpful. If you want more examples, go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have down below or check out the next video I have for you here.